Hey everybody and welcome to another season of Let's Play videos here at Finnish Retro Game Comparison Blog TV YouTube channel. Um, as with the previous season starters, I've chosen to start with a Commodore 64 game and this time it's Batman the Movie from Ocean Software 1989. And this is mostly because I've gotten so good at it, I've usually completed the game in one sitting and mostly, most of the time, even without losing a single life. But, you never know. And the other reason is because it's the only game in my Commodore 64 game collection that I have in all three published formats. On a cassette tape, on a floppy disk, and on a cartridge and obviously we're gonna play it on cartridge because it's the fastest one to load but um yeah it doesn't have the uh, awesome loading picture but we're gonna have to make do so start recording turn on the C64 and there you get the ocean logo which you don't get on a tape or disc, I think. And there we have it. Matthew Cannon, music, Andrew Slay, the graphics, and Zach Townsend did the programming. AKA all the other little bits. Leftover bits, that's it. You can choose music or sound effects here, but the game has such an awesome soundtrack that I'm gonna choose music. And here we go. Gonna turn a little bit lower here. There you go. <clears throat> Axis Chemical Plant. Jack Napier, who will turn into Joker after this, must be stopped from stealing the Axis Plant records. Sorry, records. You must find and deal with him, but first you must confront his henchmen. There we go. So we start with a. Uh, Fairly, well, I, I wouldn't say this basic, but fairly basic um, platformer in which you move around in a similar manner to Bionic Commando with your grappling hook rope thingy. And um, you get these sorts of bits where it falls from the ceiling or some steam might come from the pipe so you have to be careful when you move around not to get hit by those okay. and this isn't completely linear I mean you could choose different different paths to get to the goal but this is the most uh, logical one, I think, <clears throat> that I'm taking, that I always take. It. There's a pipe hole thing which pops out steam every time, every now and then. And the enemies in this level kind of respawn. Randomly, I think I haven't really put much of time and effort into thinking of how how this game works in that sense. But you, know, you don't really have to. <coughs> uh, using these um, ropes and dropping down levels it's uh, you have to realize that you can only drop down like two levels I mean, if you think that this this bit here is one level if you drop any further down you're gonna die instantly Oop. 
really have to be care careful not to get into the way of those grenades. <coughs> but once you learn how to... Uh, how the enemies are placed in this level, it's pretty easy to just time your moves accordingly. I'm trying to be careful here because <coughs> it is kind of easy to get distracted here if you <laughs> don't focus on the game. This one bit is, as you see, is very long way down, so you really have to be careful with how you drop down. Now I'm getting really close to the end of this level. Obviously my mission is to drop Jack Napier into the vat of acid. And it happens as easily as this. You get to this ledge here and Jack Napier is there throwing grenades at you. Just shoot one batarang at him and he drops into the acid pool there. Splash. And that's it for level one. It doesn't take too much of an effort, but you really have to know your way around the uh, factory there. And even if, even though this is the cartridge version, it kind of loads the second level. Or the second part of the game, which includes second, third and fourth levels. After which it loads the fifth level, which is the final level. And now we get to the Batmobile chase, as it says. Although, I'm, I'm not really sure what's... What are you chasing other than time? Because the idea is just to get to the Bat Cave at the end of this level. Um, the idea is just to follow the arrow. And when the arrow points directly upwards, you just... Why doesn't it go anywhere now? There. When it points upwards, it should. Um, you should just push the fire button to launch the grappling hook into a lamppost, like that, and it should go directly to the through the intersection. But sometimes it just won't cooperate as it should, and which is why the game has been equipped with. A backwards going option. <laughs> Not the most uh, clear way to say it, but there you go. Hitting any of these pedestrian vehicles takes away your energy. So, have to be careful. Sunday drivers. <clears throat> I don't have much time left. I hope this is the final stretch. Yeah. As soon as you reach the uh, forest kind of area, you know you're close to the end. And the bat cave is here. Pretty good going so far. Now, third level is basically a uh, what do you call it? Uh, is it mastermind or something? The, uh, the, that old game in which you need to connect sort of three correct elements. So I'm gonna start. This one has ten different products you need to test out, and you have. Uh, that's easy now. <laughs> 
Okay. That was pretty pretty much too easy now. The fourth level is the carnival in which you fly around in the Batwing. At the Gotham Anniversary. Anniversary? Spell it. At the Gotham Anniversary Carnival, the Joker intends to massacre the entire population of Gotham City. Use the bat wing to sever the ropes securing the Joker's deadly balloons. Uh, if you've seen Batman, the movie from 1989, you will have noticed that the game follows the movie's plotline pretty closely, actually. Even though it's not uh, necessarily the very same kind of way that everything happens in the movie, but anyway. The way to beat this level is just to stay kind of close to the front edge of the screen. It's pretty easy to just fly through these balloon ropes when you're situated like this. <coughs> if you go and back and forth, it's much more difficult to hit the ropes just at the right moment, not to hit any of them. I did a comparison of this game many years ago. It might have been on my first or second year doing the blog. I can't remember anymore, but a long time ago, and uh, if you read that, you will notice that uh, the 16-bit versions of this game are very different in these parts as the Commodore 64 and the other 8-bits. The, the Batmobile and Batwing sequences are viewed from behind, they're kind of more reminiscent of Outrun than Game, this would be copying. But yeah, anyway. <clears throat> the idea in the fourth level is just to reach the end of the time limit. If you hit these balloons, any any hit will deplete your energy. So uh, it's either you get killed by balloons or reach the time limit and that's it. And we have reached the end of level 4. It's pretty easy when you know what you're doing. <clears throat> and we're back to the platforming action again in Gotham City. Gotham Jitty. Just look at that. There's spelling mistakes in the. I'm not sure if they're exclusive to the cartridge version or if they're if they're um, they're in every release. I'm not sure. I have to check it out actually. This is interesting. I've never noticed these <laughs> spelling mistakes before. But yeah, if you've seen the movie, you know that this is pretty much going to be the end. And I have to say about the movie, though, uh, I mean, Tim Burton directing a Batman movie is, is and was like a dream come true back then if you were a Batman fan. And, I mean, he has a completely different touch to the characters and the comic books kind of feel. Because it's just enough dark and just enough comedic to be, or well, not comedic, but comic, to be really good representation of what Batman was all about, I think. I'm not a big fan of those uh, newer Batman movies from Christian Bale and uh, whoever did, the, did those three. But yeah, Michael Keaton was always my favorite Batman. Well, Jack Nicholson as the Joker is just an epic. There's no other way to put it. Um, oh yeah, I have to go feed.
here upwards. <clears throat> This final level is something I've never been that good at memorizing. It's always a bit weird in structure. I mean, this isn't particularly logical as a structure. I mean, this is supposed to be a cathedral, and it's, it's just a maze that doesn't make sense in, in, in any way. Specifically in the in the way that uh, these kind of structures are built in real life. But uh, that's that's a gaming world for you. Doesn't matter. I still like this game. Very much. Ah. Should be able to. Reach the finish line pretty soon. Look at these seedings and really odd places. Okay, I think I'm gonna. This is one of those parts I don't remember very well. <coughs> but it looks like I'm doing pretty good. have to be careful with these grenade throwers. That's unfair. I mean, these guys can walk over those uh, spikes or whatever they are. And you have to just... Wait! You have to uh, swing over them because Batman can't take those spikes. Bad game design. Well, I'm not sure it's bad, but it's uh, a bit unfair. Come on. Okay, now I'm very near the end. And I haven't died once. That's good. And here's Joker. I have to rope him down. And that's the end of the game. Didn't take too long, what, 15 minutes or so? Yep. The Joker's twisted mind has been put to rest for good, finally. The people of Gotham City will be free and happy once more, thanks to you. Yay. Loading the title screen. Well, yeah, that's Batman the movie for you, played from the cartridge version. Oh, hey, let's just put our initials there. Paz. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, but that's, that's a nice game to play through every once in a while. I just do that at least once a year, maybe. Yep, yeah, that's it for now. See you next time. Cheers.